This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Fears of a regional war in the Middle East are growing after a top Hamas official was assassinated in a Beirut, Lebanon suburb Tuesday. Hamas's deputy leader, Salah al aruri was killed in a suspected Israeli drone strike that also killed its believed six other Hamas members. al aruri was the chief of Hamas's operations in the occupied West Bank, also credited with strengthening ties between Hamas and the Lebanese group Hezbollah. While Israel has not claimed responsibility for the assassination, one prominent Israeli lawmaker congratulated the Mossad and Shin Bet on social media. An Israeli army spokesperson said the military is in a, quote, very high state of readiness in all arenas, in defense and offense, unquote. At the United Nations, a spokesperson for the U.N. Secretary General urged nations to show restraint. Because of the escalating tensions and the fragility of the situation in the region, we are calling to, for maximum restraint from all parties. We don't want any, any, rash, any rash actions that could trigger further violence. Lebanon's prime minister, Najib Mikati, condemned the drone strike, warning the attack, quote, aims to draw Lebanon into a new phase of confrontations, unquote. The assassination came a day before the fourth anniversary of the U.S. assassination of the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani, who was killed by a U.S. drone strike inside Iraq under the, the Trump administration, January 3, 2020. Earlier today, at least 73 people were killed in a pair of bomb blasts in Iran near Soleimani's tomb during an event marking his death. 173 at least were injured in the blast, which local officials describe as a terrorist act. We're joined right now by Muin Rabani. He is Middle East analyst, co-editor of Jadalia, and host of the Connections podcast. He was previously a senior analyst for the International Crisis Group. His latest piece for Mondo Weiss is headlined, The Long History of Zionist Proposals to Ethnically Cleanse the Gaza Strip. We're going to begin with what's happened in Lebanon and the significance of it. Thanks so much for being with us, Muin Rabani. Good to be with you. So, if you can talk about the assassination of the Hamas leader and what exactly this means, who al aruri is, was? Well, uh, Saleh al aruri was um, a West Bank founder of the military wing of Hamas, uh, the Qassam, uh, the Azadil Qassam Brigades. He spent many years in Israeli prisons and was then um, deported. Uh, most recently was living in uh, Beirut, in the southern suburbs of Beirut, effectively under Hezbollah protection. He was a key liaison um, between Hamas and um, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and also uh, with the uh, Iranian government. He's said to have been close with um, Yahya Sinwar and Mohammed Dif, respectively, the political and military leaders of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, and the architects of um, the Hamas attacks of October 7th. So I think um, this assassination is significant in two respects. First of all, um, that Israel has managed to assassinate the senior leader of Hamas and measured against their failure um, to really achieve anything of military significance in the Gaza Strip over the course of the last three months, um, this can be considered a, a significant um, achievement for them, although I think its impact on Hamas as an organization, apart from um, a serious blow to their morale, I don't think there will be uh, much consequence. The second and perhaps more important is that Hezbollah has clearly identified any such act by Israel on Lebanese territory, and particularly in the capital, Beirut, as a red line um, to which Hezbollah will respond with a significant escalation. And although um, Hezbollah is known to be very strategic in its um, actions and not to be impulsive in its uh, reactions, 
I think a response is inevitable. And the question people are asking now is whether it will respond in a way that maintains the kind of controlled escalatory ladder uh, between Hezbollah and Israel, or whether Israel's assassination has now set in motion a process that will lead to full-scale full war, not only between Israel and Lebanon, but, but perhaps also a wider regional conflict. Do you know about the others who were killed in this attack? Well, um, seven people in all um, were assassinated yesterday. In addition to Aruri, there were um, two commanders of the Qassam Brigades, the Hamas military wing, in addition to four other Hamas uh, cadres. It's quite clear that um, Aruri was, was the key um, uh, target. And I think one thing um, that requires explanation from Hamas's side is how these seven people were meeting in a Hamas office in Beirut at a time when it was very clear that Aruri was wanted, uh, not only by Israel, but also by the United States, which approximately a decade ago put a price on his head, and um, why they didn't take greater precautions in terms of operational security um, that allowed Israel to uh, book this achievement. And some are even, you know, describing it as a known goal by Hamas at a time when it is denying Israel any significant military achievements in the Gaza Strip. So what does this mean for a wider regional, um, perhaps, war? I mean, you have, I think, privately, the U.S. has been reaching out to leadership in Lebanon. Uh, this then takes place. Not clear what the U.S. knowledge of this was. Um, you have, at the time of this broadcast, Hassan Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, has not yet spoken, but he's expected to give a major address. The significance of this attack um, uh, on the killing of the Hamas, some of the Hamas leadership? Well, I think what many analysts in the region um, are concluding is that Israel clearly would like to see greater uh, regional escalation, and that a key reason it would like to see this escalation is because it knows that it will enjoy um, the support and eventually perhaps the participation of the United States in that escalation. To be clear, um, Washington has indicated to Israel that one of its main priorities is to prevent precisely the kind of regional escalation that we may now be about to witness. But Israel, I think, also understands that although it is um, acting in contradiction to U.S. policy preferences, that it can essentially do as it pleases because apart from a potential verbal slap on the wrist, there will be no consequences from either um, the United States or from uh, key European governments. And so, therefore, it can continue on, on this path. And you mentioned the terrorist attack in Kerman in Iran today, um, near the grave of uh, Qasem Soleimani, uh, the head of uh, the Quds Force, who was assassinated by the United States. And I think Ultimately, I think Israel's ideal situation would be one in which it is able to draw the United States into a direct confrontation with Iran. I don't think it's a likely scenario at this point, but it's one that's becoming increasingly plausible as we see um, intensified genocide, not only in Gaza, but also um, these kinds of greater escalations in Lebanon, in the Red Sea, um, uh, in Yemen and in Iraq, in Syria, and now potentially elsewhere as well. So I think um, a regional war is very much on the cards. It's by no means um, a certainty. But I do think the confidence Israel has that it can do as it pleases and not suffer any consequences for any of its actions is the key variable here. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.